All right, here we are again, just the two of us. I don't know any of the other words, but it's we'll appropriate. Make it. we we're will, gonna do it, yeah. Yeah, we'll make I it. I feel like we're in like a like a true crime podcast or something with the red lighting. With the red lighting. Because it's Passion Sunday. Or, or Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday. It's well, like still like it starts with the palms yeah. and ends with the passion. This is just a roller coaster of emotions. It's like you start it's like Jerusalem, Yay. passion, then you have the oh, thumbs up. I got it. <laughs> Look at that. And then it's like you're back up with like like the song, like the second reading, and then you're back down, and uh, it's exciting. Father, actually, I'm really excited for the homilies yeah. this weekend because in the Bible study uh, this morning, uh, Father Ross, his explanation of like what is going on and the layout of the readings and why they are the way it was like really, really good. Uh, just to illustrate how good it was, I said nothing. <gasps> The entire Bible study and anyone who knows me. That is shocking. Massive. <laughs> I, I, there was nothing to add. There was nothing to, con it was like father just crushed it. So I'm not just saying that because he's my boss. Like, you or know, that he's I not have, here. or that he's not here. I, I, I literally was sitting there like, wow. Yeah. So anyway. All right. Rocking it. Oh, he is here in Erie, but he he's is here. He's just, he's very busy doing pastor things because he's a pastor. Anyway, I am Tim Rydberg. I'm Sarah Comey. And we're here. I'm just reintroducing myself because I'm clean shaven and uh, nobody nobody knows who I am. It's and been I'm very entertaining. Man, I got to uh, fill in. It's still Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> still wonderful. Um, I got to fill in uh, at the school. They just did Newsies Junior and I got to be Teddy Roosevelt. And I have not posted pictures of social media with my Teddy Roosevelt mustache that I had going on. Um, and I'm not going to. So if you missed it, sorry. If you saw it, great. If you saw him on Sunday, you yep, know. I was here. I was rocking it. If you know, you know. The looks that some people gave me <laughs> were amazing. It was either just like, it was just a perfect like, yes, this is glorious or just what is happening. Like it was, it was one or the other. So anyway, speaking of what is happening. What's happening right now, the fourth graders yeah. and some of the other older students. It looks like we have readers and singers out there. And Deacon Dick are all practicing for the living stations this Friday. So Mrs. going Pretzel back up. Is, uh, is waving at us. Hi, Mrs. Pretzel. <laughs> Hi, Mrs. Pretzel. She's, she's teaching. <laughs> she's doing her thing. So to go back in last week's bulletin, if you want to join us this Friday, uh, either 1.30 in the afternoon or at 7 at night for the yep. living stations, our St. Jude students will be putting that on. Deacon Dick will be narrating i believe I think so, and he yeah. does a great job i say that because i see him with his paper he's rocking and rolling so um yeah we're excited about it it's a beautiful little tradition that we have here so please come check it out should you be free um yeah we had a really good collection like we yeah. don't often talk about you know necessarily point out the money stuff but thank you all who donated last week uh, to the church really good we love it csa is getting better we're gonna have um an update coming very soon uh, about how CSA is going, you mm -hmm. know, and, and, you know, encouragement for people uh, who have not participated to participate. But you were saying in our staff meeting the other day that a lot of new, a lot a of new lot donors, of new people, yeah. um, as opposed to people that have given before mm -hmm. for whatever reason, some people wait. Um, but we have a lot of new people that are trying out, uh, the CSA this year and to see, you know, the fruits that the mm -hmm. CSA brings here at St. Jude. Absolutely. So there's a, there's, there's different reports or different updates that father will be presenting to the parish very soon. So that is coming, but just in advance oh, actually, of that, the, the report that he showed us at the staff meeting uh -huh. with the, the graphs the, and stuff. Yeah. With those, those are actually on the website. Oh, okay. Um, I don't remember where. Yeah, so we'll get that out to you soon. So yeah, yeah. it'll it'll be out there. So if you want to see all that, you can check all of that out. Yeah. Um, Those are under annual report type things. He just has a graph to show the money coming in, mm -hmm. where it's coming from, and where it's going to, so that Absolutely. you can see uh, where we spend the most money and why we mm -hmm. do certain things here the way we do. So. Yep. And then there's also stuff coming about because in this next year, a lot of the CSA is going toward planning. You know, so it's like what we need to you know, prepare for big expenditures in the future. So we get closer and closer too, thinking about it. Like it, it seemed like a date so far away when they were going to announce that pastoral plan. Right. It's, like it's a month coming away. right after Easter. Yeah. So. Actually, it's like a week away. It's like, yeah. it's like two weeks. It's April 11th. Yeah. Two or three weeks. Holy smokes. Yeah. Holy smokes. Is Holy right. incense. Woo. Holy smokes. Woo. Smells good at least. Anyway. Um, 
Yeah, so we've got the Triduum coming up. As always, this Palm Sunday, members of the staff will be around the church. Should you need us for anything, uh, you can, you know, grab us, talk to us. Don't grab us. Just don't talk to it. us. Don't grab us. But you know what I mean? It's just the figure of speech. And then... Um, we don't really have a whole lot going on. It is Holy uh, Week, so it we is are Holy trying week. to keep we're, everything we're, quiet. We're getting and... ready to go. Uh, we, of course, have our Wednesday um, glory madness, a lot mm -hmm. of fun. You know, we have Mass in the morning, fellowship, and then Bible study, and then um, we'll, we will have our school Mass next week. It'll be the last one uh, before Easter break, so we will have Mass on the 27th of March, and then, of course, celebrate recovery as we do every Wednesday, every Wednesday. at 6 p.m. Um, if you've never been to celebrate recovery, um, you're going to be hearing a lot about it because it's a great thing. It's getting better and better every week, and we really uh, would love for you to experience it. So if you've never been, um, and Sarah and I aren't technically on the team, but we are participating. Uh, I help with the music. Um, so I just show up, and we have the sound system set up. We get the mic set up. It's very low key, very chill. Everyone's socializing. We do about three songs, praise and worship, a little prayer, and then there's a presentation. There's some sharing um, with each other if you want. It's a really cool format. It's very lighthearted. It's very chill, um, but it does deal with uh, anything. I mean, it could be something big and heavy. It could be something small and cumbersome, you know, but regardless, it is. It's a beautiful thing. So well, even if you aren't sure that you need Celebrate Recovery and or you know somebody in your life mm. who you just feel needs an atmosphere mm -hmm. to just be themselves and maybe share and, and be heard mm -hmm. because Celebrate Recovery is not a place where we fix each other. We Absolutely. share and we um, give encouragement and empowerment to mm -hmm. each other to to get through it and then we you know work, work by the grace of god because it's through the beatitudes that we that we work celebrate recovery um, absolutely so yeah you know all those all those good god things here at the church right mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> and i mean the thing that i think people often forget is um and we're trying to sort of point this out so everybody uh listen up is that it's okay if you're not okay you know, like, and it does. And when we say that, we're not trying to encourage you to not be okay. You right. know, I think that there's this vibe where it's like, well, if I go to celebrate recovery, I'm admitting that I don't have it all together, you know? And it's like, okay, like, no, you know? Yeah. And, and I, um, some weeks I show up and I want to stay, you know, <laughs> cause I'm just like, man, like I, I could use it today. Some weeks I just sit there and pray for the people that are there, you know, like I, it, it's just a community. I mean, it's a real just truly just is a community thing. It's not necessarily like AA. I mean, people maybe who do, you know, have struggles with, you know, substance issues or whatever do come, sure. But then there's also people who just have anxiety or there are people who just can't put down their phone because they're addicted to that, you know. Or somebody um, who's been hurt in their life or somebody mm -hmm. who's uh, lost something or something, just something in your life that yeah. you just need to to or have community with it yeah. could even just be a thing where it's like you know right now you turn on the news and it's just all bad news and and you just feel down and you just need to pick me up i mean celebrate recovery is great for that too so it's just it's a great thing you're going to be hearing a lot more about it after easter um we're going to try and sort of bring that atmosphere uh to to all of us just a welcoming open environment that is that is i mean but with with you know it's great to think about the resurrection and have hope and and everything but the cross is a reality you know we all have sufferings in our lives that we have to go through and trust god with and walk together in so um it's a great great way to start out the the paschal triduum you know with mm -hmm. palm sunday because uh, it's it really feeds into that but before we talk about that a little bit more uh, congratulations last week to isaac gearbauer he was baptized. Gebauer. Gebauer. Yeah, you added an R. I did. In your mouth. Yep. Anyway, <laughs> whatever. He was baptized. He was baptized. And we're baby. so happy. It's adorable. We got a few more baptisms this weekend, so you can see next week's bulletin uh, for them. And uh, yeah, so keep them in your prayers, their, their family in your prayers. So yeah, Holy yeah. Thursday. We've had it in the bulletin for like a month. So it actually worked because I have not received one phone call about when the triduum is so now that i said that i'm sure everyone will call and ask asking what when what time it is but yeah. it is in here and uh so you can come on holy thursday to the mass of the lord's supper at 6 p.m followed by a prayer pilgrimage um if you're interested in that you need to sign up with sarah so definitely that's sarah that's and sarah. you can call her you email her sign up for that if you would like to do that 
Also, Good Friday. Then, of course, we have our 2 p.m. Uh, service in the church. Uh, has the liturgy of the word, um, veneration of the cross, and then uh, communion. But it is not a mass. It is just a service. So uh, you can check that out. Holy Saturday, Easter Vigil, 9 p.m. It's going to be awesome. Yeah. I don't know what else to say about that. Like, it's just the, the Easter Vigil is just a phenomenal, a phenomenal thing. And then Easter Sunday is our usual mass times of 7.30 a.m., 9 a.m., and 10.30 a.m., all in the church. So we would love to celebrate the Lord's Paschal Triduum with you. So come and be with us. So we're going to go backwards just a little bit yes, onto this page. do it. We're going to, um, so we have, this is also where we have our family mm-hmm like family column, right? Yeah. So this column is just going to be moving into the children's bulletin, which you will find out. It won't be obviously in this. No, not in this. Bulletin. Not in the bul- not in the children's bulletin this week. There will be bulletins for the children, mm-hmm. for families at the entrance to every of the ch- at every entrance of the church. Mm-hmm. So be sure to pick one up. Yep. Um, like I, it's going to kind of be just like the ones that the kids and children's liturgy get uh, add on a little more stuff to do as a family yeah. so this this column will be moving to the into new into that bulletin, the bulletin and that'll be great so um it's perfect uh, like i said those easter masses that's when you'll find this so be sure to check it out at the uh well starting this sunday we're gonna have one out for palm oh sunday. for palm sunday t- yeah we're gonna test it Okay. I have it already. So I just have to print it's it. there. It'll be We're there. We're getting it out there. So yeah. at the entrance to every doorway. At every mass. There you will find it. Very good. Um, we have uh, Uno's tip of the week. Uh, Uno has a bit of a challenge here. He introduces himself. He says, hi, I'm Uno. That sheep, or, uh, the, that sheep that the shepherd left the 99 to find. Jesus did what he did for you this week. Put yourself in a place to be found. Take some time this week to pray and focus on the passion, death, and resurrection of Jesus. Ask yourself, how does this impact my life? Does this change how I forgive and love other people? How does this help me live and be and become the Beatitudes? That is what the pilgrimage on Thursday is about. So whether you make the pilgrimage or not after Holy Thursday Mass, um, like this is a great thing to think about. It's something I've been thinking about a lot leading up to this is become like we are blessed. Beatitude just means blessing. You know, we are blessed and then we have to become blessing for other people. So um, what's really interesting yeah. about this, too, I, I didn't realize you wrote this in here because I don't read this. Until, Notice how I put the pilgrimage know. right underneath, <laughs> right underneath it. Um, <laughs> just an update to it. It's contact Sarah, not Jesse. But yeah, oh, it doesn't um, say Jesse. It does. OK, but that's because originally it was. But that's Sorry. OK. No worry. No worry. No worry. I'm not worried. It's um, fine. So anyway, one of the questions in our Joe Bible study last night is when do you hear God? Ooh. Right? Like, do you hear him Ooh. when you sleep? Like, you know what I mean? Like, when do you hear him? And, like, how does God, you know, present the answers and stuff to you? So, mm-hmm. this kind of Uno, you know, hand in hand. It's there you go. what a Bible study will do. It's incredible. Mm. It's incredible. Also, um, we had a great presentation and a great turnout to the presentation, Michael DeSanctis, last week um, about, um, I forget what the title was. It was <laughs> long. It was like all the great things about. Um, leaving before dessert leaving before dessert yeah so like kind of like leaving mass before the end of mass before the blessing and um a few people texted me afterward and just had some questions about about the eucharist because because michael uh, brought it up um about the real presence and that sort of thing because it is actually sadly um sadly true that a majority of catholics do not believe in the real presence in the eucharist that jesus is fully present body blood soul and divinity in the Eucharist, which is the source and the summit of our faith. So um, I didn't, you know, go crazy, but this is just uh, three three little paragraphs from what the USCCB uh, has to say. Um, and in the midst of this Eucharistic revival, uh, you can go see they have a ton of stuff, ton of videos, um, and uh, you can check that out. But um, if you read this and it in, inspires any more questions or whatever, don't hesitate to call us, ask us, or just come and, come and have a chat. Um, because it is, it's an important topic, seeing as it is, again, like the thing that we believe in. That, <laughs> you One know, of the things that yeah. I, I intended the last part of the second presentation that Dr. DeSanctis put out mm-hmm. there. And um, one of the things that we talked about shortly was, um, you know, we come to mass and we we have a meal, right? Mm-hmm. Because that's True. what that is. That's yeah. the part of mass. And it, just as if you were to go to a friend's house or your relative's house or somebody's house for dinner you don't just walk out mm. after you eat you you take you your just, time you take your time 
you have a conversation with a person, you know, maybe about the meal or mm-hmm. their life or whatever, and you thank them. Mm-hmm. And that's what that moment is after, um, after receiving, you yeah. know, it is after, after receiving communion. I know, mm-hmm. you know, it's nice to get out to the parking lot, be the first one out and get to the, wherever you need to go yeah. real quick. But taking that time to go back to your seat, to thank Jesus for, you know, becoming a part of your life. Um, and then getting a quick blessing. It's only yeah. It's literally, literally one. like one minute. Yeah, because we do one the announcements at the beginning of mass, not exactly. the end. Exactly. So. so it it's over. <laughs> very quickly, <laughs> it's over very quickly. And I then mean, it's it fun to praise Jesus as you sing on the way out too. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. Like absolutely, and to meditate. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Which is what we were talking about last time with the with the closing song. So again, we really appreciate some of these questions. They're like because if you have a question, odds are someone else does or mm-hmm. has that question. So you asking it. Thank you to the people that texted me. You asking it, it, it gives other people a chance to to be heard. So yep. thank you. We love questions from the pew. Absolutely. The eclipse, prayer Still service. Still happening. It's yes. coming. Sun and moon, bless the Lord. Monday, April 8th at 1 p.m. We're going to have a prayer service in the church. It's very simple. Um, nothing crazy. It'll be like probably like a half an hour. Right. Very quick. And then just heading out to the parking lot or wherever to watch uh, the solar eclipse. We will have parking available for anyone and everyone. Anyone and everyone is invited, invited to the prayer service as well, but parking is, I believe, $20, $20 a car. A car. Yep. So, yeah, you can come on into the lot. And we do lot. have the first 100 people. As of right now, we have 100 of those fun glasses Ooh. for you. So yeah, that's so you get a that pair can of be, those, You can get too. a p- pair of those for free well, with your purchase. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you got a thumbs up. Good job. Anyhow, right over my face. I, well, <laughs> you're just that great. Um, so, yeah, so you can check that out. It's all in the bulletin. It was the, it was the cover last time, and, and now it's this is there. All right, so this is big, and I'm not even going to try and explain all of this. This is a, a really, really informative two pages. Um, it's not often that we give a two-page spread to anything, uh, but the Catholic Foundation has a, a marvelous article and explanation about securing uh, the future of our parish uh, through the St. Jude Parish Endowment. So do you have anything you want to add about this or we just want them to read it? Just read it. If you have questions, um, you can email or call Father Ross. He's the one who was working, you know, mostly with this. Mm -hmm. I just get the joys of Mm -hmm. making sure the the foundation gets the money. (laughs) Absolutely. And Lisa (laughs) Lewis, uh, who is the executive director. Is a parishioner also. She's a parishioner also. And on our parish leadership team. Absolutely. So So she's working very closely with Father um, and the other members of the parish leadership team to come up with um, a plan for the future. And of course, it doesn't matter what it is, right. you know, it's going to cost something. So um, we're just so blessed to have her on the team uh, leading, helping lead us, uh, because I think sometimes um, you can have people that are well intentioned, but then it's wonderful when you have someone who's well intentioned, but also a professional. So Lisa's lovely and uh, she's so kind. Um, and welcoming to everyone in the pews, but also uh, providing us with that knowledge and leadership and wisdom, you know. So, and she's also just fun to hang out with. She is. <laughs> so, if you ever she get is. to see Lisa, be sure to give her give her a shout out. Um, and then these are all repeats. It's just what's been going on in Lent. Um, you know, bringing having food for the people who need assistance. Mm-hmm. Um, and that includes our college kids, right? Absolutely. I have a huge, big stack in my office that's taking up space. Um, I'll be <laughs> Thank sending you it out all. soon. Yeah. I have some students who do have finals here in April and not necessarily May. So if you have anything that you can donate, bring it in as soon as possible. Mm-hmm. I am accepting donations of monetary because it does cost a lot to send those boxes to those students. True. But they are well appreciated. I think appreciated. this weekend is the, is the deadline. It, kind it is, of, but more or less. I will take stuff, you know, um, I'm probably not going to put them together until like right after Easter. <laughs> you know, that, that Monday qu- after that Easter. That little, that little deep do. breath moment. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Uh, Holy Week is a little crazy for a church office. So that yeah. Does, that does. And again, if you've had anything you want to share on this Lent, you that you you experienced, um, something that you want to reflect on during Easter, um, we're not ready uh, fully with getting that Easter mm-hmm. magazine out on Easter. Yeah, but it will be ready during the Easter season, which is so fifty days long. That, so we got time. So we have some time, Tons but we time. have started a Google Drive here. So mm-hmm. just email us; we'll yeah. put it in there, and then I mean, we'll and it's not stuff. just it's not just pictures, you know. No. Either like like some people think, oh, it's just going to be like a you know just a bunch of pictures of, and recipes of, of people. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I was going to say. There are things going to be things like recipes. So if you have any testimonials, so it's like if you if something happened to you, if you've been going to the Joe Bible study and it's really or Roy's Bible study or Roy Kim's Bible study and and that study has really 
helped your Lenten journey. Please tell us about that. Yeah. Um, because again, uh, sometimes um, God speaks to people through people and he might have a message that he gave to you an experience that he gave to you that wasn't just for you, but also for the good of the community. Um, so it's a very Eucharistic thing uh, to share what God is doing in your life. So don't hesitate. Don't be afraid. If you feel like I'm not a writer, uh, that's okay. You know, give us a call. Give us the bullet points. Or, hey, we could we could do a church bulletin insert on and you could come on the podcast with us. That'd be fun. So That'd be fun. Anyway, uh, so there's a lot of stuff, a lot of fun stuff coming in the Easter season. We've been talking about ways we can increase our, you know, social media presence. We've been talking about doing church bulletin inserts, which is an episode where we you know, talk for however long to a specific person on a specific topic, not just the immediate moment of the bulletin, but something that could be, you know, talked about, like, you know, a, someone has asked, uh, you know, maybe have Dr. Michael DeSanctis on just to talk about, about some of the stuff that he's given presentations on. You know, we've had a, a couple of people who, who have, I've already talked to who have led Bible studies uh, who may want to come on. So we're going to have a, a lot of really cool stuff coming out in Easter and beyond. Uh, so please keep your ear to the ground for that. I think is, is it ear to the ground. Something like that. Whatever. Pay attention. Join <laughs> us on the podcast. <laughs> all right. Thank you all so much. Um, also, we have a ton of uh, prayer requests on our prayer board in the office. And I know that we have a wonderful team of people uh, on our prayer line. So it's in the bulletin on that first contact page down near the bottom. You can find the numbers to call if you do have a prayer request. And there's a whole team of people uh, that will immediately be notified and immediately start praying. And they really do pray. It's not just a thing where it's like, oh, this is a little ministry that I just sort of do to get my name you know, out there to be famous. No, they really do pray. So please, if you have a prayer intention, you're, you're welcome to call the office. We'd love to pray with you, but please also give that prayer line a call uh, so that the, our parish can pray with you as well. And don't, don't forget Mary and Doer of Knots is the last week up um, mm. here. We're taking it down Absolutely. on Good Friday yeah. um, and, in, and changing it into a little bit something different, but mm -hmm. um, you know, add your last intentions there too. Absolutely. All right. Know of our prayers, our love for you. And uh, yeah, we'll see you around. <laughs>